Hypocrisy is rank in the Republican Party right now. Yesterday, after voting to remove Congresswoman Ilhan Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee, Republican Congressman Ken Buck was overheard in an elevator calling it the stupidest vote in the world. According to Roll Call, his fellow Republican Mike Simpson agreed and added that all it does is make Omar a martyr. And being the brave public servants that they are, they urge fellow passengers in the elevator to not let leadership know their thoughts. We won't do that. House Republicans are actively trying to gaslight the country into thinking that what Ilan Omar did was on the same level as the, as the Republicans that Democrats removed from, from committees uh, over a year ago. But it's not the same. Omar was criticized by both parties for playing into anti-Semitic tropes, including when she ins ins insinuated that Israel's allies in America were motivated by money. She did apologize for that tweet one day later. Meanwhile, Paul Gosar, who accused Omar of anti-Semitism, actually went to a pro-Hitler conference and later hung out with white nationalist Nick Fuentes with no apology. Even after public outcry, he spoke at the conference one year later. He claimed it was a miscommunication and said he was done dealing with Nick. But then a few months later, tweeted and deleted a documentary about Fuentes. No apology. And Marjorie Taylor Greene, she also went to that conference. Again, no apology. And she defended going. I'm joined now by Republican strategist and MSNBC political analyst Susan Del Percio and Dean Obadala, MSNBC daily columnist and host of Sirius XM's The Dean Obadala Show. Welcome to you both. So, Susan, mm -hmm. are Republicans getting away with it? I mean, do you, do you think the American public actually conflates, conflates Paul Gosar and Marjorie Taylor Greene with Ilan Omar, Eric Swalwell, and Adam Schiff? No, I mean, those who pay very close attention, yes, but basically, they are going to get away with it, Michael. I don't like saying it, but that's the reality, because this news is not as big of news as other things, like the docu classified documents, and more importantly for Democrats, like the job numbers that came out today. So they get away with it in the sense of the public probably won't really care about it too much. But when, the, when they want to bring it up and, and do pointed things to the Republicans, the Democrats will have it in their pocket, which is rightfully so, because it is disgraceful that she was removed from this committee. I have very little in common with the Congresswoman uh, politically, but this isn't, it shouldn't be about politics. She is qualified to be there, frankly, as were the other two Congress members that were removed mm -hmm. from committees. But to see on the floor, to see these Republicans actually vote to kick her off, it, they have no shame. I mean, and of course, we say that all the time, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. we've kind of run through the, sh <laughs> the shame uh, factor in all of this. So, you know, yeah. Dean, that, that, that sort of, I guess, in one sense, sort of begs the question of, you know, this idea of a Congresswoman Omar as a martyr. Um, what do you make of that uh, assessment by Congressman Simpson? She's not a martyr. She's stronger now than ever. Her speech yesterday on the floor was great. She was defiant, Michael. She said, you're not going to silence her. This is a woman who lived in a war-torn refugee camp, came to America in her teens, and has moved up to be a member of the House of Representatives. Look, the GOP went after her for one reason, Michael, the same reason Donald Trump targeted her. They chanted, send her back at a rally of his in July 2019. It's not what she's about or what she says. It's who she is. She's black. She's a Muslim. She's an immigrant. She's a strong woman. She's all the things so much of the GOP base doesn't like rolled into one. That's what this is about. So Congressman Buck can say this is the dumbest thing they've done. Not to Kevin McCarthy. Look at it. It took him 15 ballots to get elected. It took one to demonize and target a black Muslim woman, and they all got on board, all the Republicans. This plays well for the GOP base. And last thing, Michael, there are over 270 Republicans in the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Out of the 270 plus, how many are black women? Zero. And there's a reason why.